This Equipment World video is brought to you by Chevron Dello 600 ADF Ultra Low Ash Diesel Engine Oil. It's time to kick some ash. Hi everyone, welcome back to Equipment World. You're watching The Dirt. I'm your host, Brian. And today I wanna to talk about the big, bad, scary monster in the room. I wanna talk about AI technology in construction. You know, you have in my mind, there's two sides to this conversation. There's the guys that are actually in the seats and everyone's super ter paranoid and, and terrified that their job's gonna get taken. But then the other side is you have the contractors who are dealing with a universal, huge labor shortage and everyone's wondering, when will AI technology finally get here and help me replace my workforce? Well, today we're talking with Errol Ahmed from Built Robotics. He's gonna be here to talk specifically about some of the AI technology they are using and what he thinks is going to happen with the future of AI in construction. But before we get into that, I want to take a second to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Chevron Lubricants. Protecting your diesel engine and its exhaust after treatment system has traditionally been seen as an either or proposition when it comes to choosing the engine oil that's going to protect your system. And that's exactly why Chevron spent more than a decade of R&D work developing a no compromise formulation. Now I don't have to tell you why a clogged DPF is bad news, but here's the real kick in the pants. 90% of that ash clogging up your DPF? and then upping your fuel and maintenance costs? It comes from your engine oil. You might be thinking, why don't they make an engine oil with less ash in it then? You'll be happy to learn that Chevron agrees with you. They've developed a new ultra low ash diesel engine oil that is specifically designed to combat DPF ash clogging. Dello 600 ADF with Omnimax technology cuts sulfate ash by 60%, radically reducing the rate of DPF clogging and extending the DPF service life by two and a half times. Before you had to choose between protecting your engine or your after treatment system, now you don't. Dello 600 ADF with Omnimax technology. It's time to kick some ash. So my first question is, can you kind of give us a little, at a, at a roughly high level, uh, kind of a background on what Built Robotics does and how your technology is implemented on machines? Absolutely. So at Built Robotics, we build something we call the Exosystem, and it's an aftermarket upgrade for excavators. And what it does is it turns them into fully autonomous trenching robots. The Exosystem can be installed in as little as a day and wow. can be ready to use... Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you out. That just that was shocking to me that you can install it within a day because that's a pretty that's a pretty integrated system. Yeah, it's pretty incredible what we've gotten it down to. I mean, we've we've had years of R and D testing on job sites. You know, now we're fully commercial and and customers rely on us every day. We we bring the exosystem, we install it, we calibrate it, and in less than a day, it's ready to roll and rumble and and get to digging. So when it comes to controlling where this thing is going to dig and to what depth and everything. How is that all handled on the job site? There's a few steps to getting it set up. We have something called Everest. This is a software platform that connects to our exosystem and it allows the user who we call a robotic equipment operator, an REO, to interface with the machine. And they'll open up their laptop, log into Everest, and they'll upload a layout file and, and sort of select the points they'll want for the trench. They'll also select the width of the trench, the depth, and then the robot can take it from there. Interesting. Now, what kind of sensors is this thing including to make sure that grades actually cut to grade and, and you, when a rock falls into the trench, it makes sure to grab that? How does that all work? The robot has a number of sensors on it for all, all the goodies, all the bells and whistles. We have GPS, of course. We have cameras for perception and p obstacle and pedestrian detection. We also use radar. Radar is another thing we use for obstacle detection. And we have IMU sensors as well to give the robot a sense of its space and balance. That's incredible. And this can all be installed within a day. And then I'm assuming there's a decent learning curve for your REO to actually get his feet under him and understand how to interface with the machine and how to set it up. Yeah, absolutely. The REO is, is sort of a new kind of career we were spearheading. It's, it's kind of the first of its kind. And we're working with a number of partners to kind of get people trained up on it. Typically, we'll find people from our partner's job site. They'll sort of nominate um, existing operators that are good, good, at, good at what they do, and they'll go through a 30-hour-ish program that includes uh, you know, classroom learning and on-site learning to work with the robots, troubleshoot, plan projects, upload geofences, um, you know, shoot GPS points, and things like that. So that is a perfect segue into one of the main things I wanted to talk about with you because you guys are, I mean, you're in the hardcore heart of 
automating machines in the dirt field. And one of the big questions I get all the time, one of the big concerns is, oh my gosh, they're going to take our jobs. We're going to, there's not going to be any operators in the future. But what you just told me is directly contradicting that. Can you expound more on kind of how you see AI coming into the picture and how that relates to current operators? For sure. You know, at Built, we think operators and people working with robotics and automation will be required for a really long time. It's an essential part. And I think, you know, at Built, strategically, we spend almost an equal amount of time on building the robots as much as training and getting the right kind of labor and skilled workers to work with our machines. And they kind of go hand in hand. Um, you know, robots are sort of tools. They're, they're, they're smart tools. They're really effective tools. But then they, they're just a tool um, on the job site. And it's really up to the people to figure out how they'll be used, how they'll be deployed, and come up with creative ways of how to manage these machines. Are you guys strictly excavators right now? Uh, what other pieces of equipment can be automated on the job site? Sky is the limit. I mean, early on in the company's history, we, we automated dozers, skid steers, CTLs, lots of different kinds of machines to, to prove that we could do it and it's possible and there's good applications for all of them. Uh, what we found is excavators are really popular, they're really versatile, and we've, we've doubled down on excavators right now. We're really going to perfect the technology on them and then take that to the next step. And what kind of tasks can be automated? Are we talking strictly trenching? Can we do grading? What sort of things can you do in, in a true AI mode? Right now, our robotic exosystem does strictly trenching work, and we're hoping in the future we'll move on to other applications of autonomy, you know, grading, uh, loading, file driving. The sky's really the limit. I mean, what we like to do is we like to find tasks that are perfect for automation. They're, they're kind of discrete. They're, they're mundane. They can be easily automated and then kind of work from there. So kind of backing up to the higher level, uh, because you're kind of in this portion of the industry, how do you see AI technology really shaping the landscape of this field? You know, call it 10 years from now, 15 years from now. What does that really look like? Wow, that, yeah. In your mind. I know, I know you don't have an official <laughs> view on ball. this, but, but kind of just speculating, sure, absolutely. But just kind of with the knowledge that, that you have behind the scenes of just how advanced we're getting with this technology, if you kind of had to kind of put an idea yeah. out there, what would that look like to you? Yeah, I mean, we see automation kind of as the next big step in in machine equipment use. You had horses, you had steam, you had hydraulics, you had GPS, now you have automation. And each of those brought a huge shift in the way we kind of build. And I think that's what automation is going to unlock over the next 10, 15, 20 years. Um, we'll have unheard of utilization. We'll be able to build incredibly fast. Um, we'll be able also to build in ways we may not be thinking right now. I mean, there's things like swarm robotics, or maybe the design of machines change. The maybe use a lot of smaller machines instead of a few big ones. I mean, there's a lot of interesting things you can do when, when the tools are automated. Uh, and and it's, it, we don't know exactly what, what will happen um, next, but it's going to be a really productive area for construction and kind of a, a new page for how we build. So this, in my mind, this argument kind of has two paths to it. You have uh, the guy sitting in the seat and his path is, I'm terrified of this technology. It's going to put me out of work. We've got to figure something else out. And then you've got the contractor side who's struggling with this giant labor shortage that everyone's familiar with. And they're going, the sooner the better. Come on, get it out here. And so uh, from the contractor side, because we kind of talked about the, the job replacement side, from the contractor side, how far out are we from these machines really starting to gain some traction in the industry to where it is going to start helping with the workforce shortage that we're seeing? We're already seeing some great, great productivity gains and, and help with the labor issues uh, with a lot of contractors we work with today. Um, when, you know, when you start using the robot, you can see savings up to 20, even 30 percent from your existing costs. And that lets you build faster, hire more and kind of grow your business. So today we're seeing a lot of that using robotics. And so a lot of contractors come up to us and the mindset, the conversation has shifted. It used to be when will robotics be available? When will automation be available to now? When can I get this? When can I in implement it? You know, it's, it's real. It's here. So, so they're, they're on board. And, and actually, you know, a lot of the operators uh, uh, and, and skilled workers are, are really excited about it, too, because they actually know the most how difficult and how dangerous this job can be and ways that they can take their skills and improve and build upon them and work with the latest technology is kind of really exciting for them, too. So uh, we, we're always excited with the amount of interest in, in automation from both sides. I was just about to say, I, I feel like 
the way AI is looked at right now by the majority of people in the industry is uh, it's a total lack of knowledge. And therefore, that leads to this giant fear that uh, they're just going to come in, they're going to automate everything, and I'm just out of a job. And in reality, I think we're seeing exactly what you're describing, where there are some tasks that can be automated, they will be automated, and it makes sense to do so. But at the same time, there's still a lot of tasks where you have to have that individual in the seat. Would you, would you agree with that more or less, or am I off? No, I completely agree with you. There's, there's some things that may never be automated. It may not make sense. It, it may just be too difficult. And just like tools have their purpose in their place, you know, automation has a purpose in its place. And, you know, early on, we're still figuring what that is. So there is some, some theorizing and maybe confusion or maybe even a little fear. But as we actually implement it, as people see it using the job site, a lot of that kind of goes away and you kind of figure out where this makes sense, where the robots make sense and where automation makes sense. Well, thank you so much for the time. Any any kind of final parting thoughts or words that you've got? That's always a great question. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I always, get you. <laughs> always get you. It's like, I have to say something really uh, profound yeah, right now. Profound, um, exactly, exactly. <laughs> no, no I, I mean, I, I feel like, you know, we, we're, we're, we're big fans of automation. We, we think it's going to change construction in a way that's that's never been done before but we're also always surprised and amazed at the insight and excitement we get from people who have been in this industry for years and years and years and and, and they're saying finally you know we're, we're getting the tools we need to build the way we want to build and i think that's what automation unlocks for us that's awesome that's uh, you i will say this you make this sound really really exciting and it makes me want to get more involved in this side of the industry <laughs> you please have, do you can tell you have a passion for it so <laughs> thank you thank you well, thank you again to Errol and to Built Robotics for coming on the show and discussing AI technology. And hopefully that's done a couple things. If you are one of those guys in the seats, hopefully you know that you're still going to have a job 10 years from now. This is not something that AI is going to come in and 100% replace the workforce. It's not going to happen. We're a long ways off from that. And if you're a contractor, I hope it's maybe giving you the idea that AI technology is closer than you think. We already have AI technology being implemented on some job sites. This technology isn't quite as out of reach as it often seems. So as always, I hope this has been helpful to everyone. Feel free to comment down below if you have anything to say, and we'll catch you guys on the next episode of The Dirt.